I welcome you brothers and sisters to this Surefire Life Conference platform. And we're continuing with our teaching, the true riches, the true riches. We have said categorically that God Almighty has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through Jesus Christ. He has given us his Holy Spirit to enjoy the abundance of God. As Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, part B, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. However, we need to know how to enjoy this abundance. As our texts clearly showed, that there is a process. And we have dealt with this reading from Luke chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. Joseph in the Bible gives us a very clear model of somebody who God was with and who came to that successful life. And we have been looking at the model of Joseph to see the keys that he applied to enjoy success. And brothers and sisters, I can tell you confidently that every human being, not just Christians, who have applied this key has come out very successful. As Jesus said in that same Luke chapter 16, he said the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. So the focus of this teaching is to make the children of light, Christians, and anyone who cares at all, to listen and understand these processes that if you can model the life of Joseph, you can have the result Joseph had. Praise the name of the Lord. So very quick recap of um, what we did uh, last uh, week. I will share my screen. So, we dealt with the four S of Joseph, skill, service, self-discipline, and sacrifice. Last week's topic, we focused on skills and some emphasis on work. So I would like somebody to, as I said, this session will be interactive. I'd like somebody to mention some of the skills we discussed last week. Some of the skills we discussed last week. Quickly open the line and mention any of the skills you can remember. And you remember there was an assignment, you were to pick a skill or skills area that you are interested in and do a bit of uh, study and, and, and uh, development. Okay, who's going? Who? Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, go ahead, please. Okay. Yes, the, the part that struck me that last week was technical skill. That ability to solve problems. Okay. Yes. And so um, hello, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. So I have a list of it that I put together, and um, although I've I've not uh, fully commenced all of the work, but I think I've been doing some studies on YouTube, watching videos in line with some of the skills that I've listed. As great. You said yesterday, great, as you spoke about it last week. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else? Thank you for sharing. So this is what we covered. We covered technical skill, which is problem solving and uh, 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 solution providing skills. People relationship and networking skills. There are many sub elements here. There is also communication skills here. So I told you to also look into this and find out more. Business, business skills, which has economic, commercial and finance. Some people don't understand basic economics. Many times when people bring business proposal for me to look at, I will say, okay, now you are going to spend X amount of money. How will this money return profits? What is your net profit? They cannot calculate it. You cannot 
do any business if you cannot make a cash flow cash flow you must learn simple cash flow and be able to put it together because that's the only way you'll be able to tell if your business will make profits before you get into it commercial how you make money i'm talking a bit on this uh, often again i will ask people in my sme role uh, mmse role micro medium small uh, scale enterprises or you turn it around uh, how do you make money people will be telling me their business processes i said you still don't get it how do you make money you must understand how you make money if you don't understand how you make money mm, i tell you that business may just barely get through so people struggle i want to just share something here i was asking the best answer i have heard so far I was asking a taxi driver, a guy who has been trained, developed the skill properly, developed his business plan. Well, I asked him, how do you make money? You're running taxi business. He said, yes, how he makes money is by selling taxi cars. I said, good, this is the man I've been looking for. So tell me, how does that happen? He said to me, he drives his taxi cars for two years. By that two years, the car would generate enough money to buy a new taxi and with some change. Then he will sell that taxi because if you start entering the space of high maintenance, he will sell that taxi. So the money that the taxi made, he will use to buy a new car. And the profit on top that he made within that two years will be his goal again, plus, plus the money he makes from selling the old taxi, the two years taxi. So by the time I was speaking to him, he said he had almost 10 vehicles, 10 vehicles. That is business commercial skill. I also spoke to another young man who was uh, getting into uh, he, wa he wanted to set up printing business, printing business. And I asked him, how do you make money from this printing business you want to set up? He was at the planning stage. He could not explain it. I looked at his proposal and I looked at it. I saw that he was not doing printing business. He was doing branding business. He brands T-shirts and tops. He prints flyers with designs and all that. So I told him, you are doing branding business, not printing. Meanwhile, he wanted to invest money into printing. I said, how would your printing element generate money from your branding business? You are, soft, you are going to suffer loss, deep loss, because the costs of the branding aspect of that business was only like 15% of the total costs of the business. So how would 15%, which is your business, generate money to sustain the whole, uh, the other 85% uh, uh, cost, which is printing? So I guided him, and that cost would drop significantly. Uh, only though he didn't progress, I've still been trying to get him to progress that business. So marketing, sales, execution, Execution skills, many people don't pay attention to execution. They want to do business, but they don't know how to execute things. You must know how to execute things. So all this rolled up into leadership skills, leadership skills. The positive behavior, diligence, and excellence. And the two biggest negative behaviors to avoid is complacency, laziness, and shabbiness. Okay, I said two, but I put three here. Of course, you know, laziness and shabbiness are the same thing. I want to emphasize this shabbiness. Some people don't pay attention to details and quality in what they do. When you are given a scope of work to do, you must do and exceed that scope. This was the key of Joseph. So today we want to focus on service, service. So very quickly, Service is the application of skills to meet needs and solutions 
and, 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 and provide solutions to problems, application of skills to meet needs and provide solutions to problems. That is service. You give service. You use the skills that you have to serve people. Many people, unless they exploit, they are hoarding their skills. When you are in the class, teacher asks question, volunteer to attempt. That is how you hone your skill. That is how you sharpen and develop uh, your, 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 yourself. Don't hide in the corner. When you are in the group, volunteer. In that work, volunteer. Service, service, service. So we will see the example of Joseph from Genesis chapter 39, from 7 all the way down. But let's just look at this. Service could be in the areas of physical needs, societal needs, spiritual needs, economic needs, and there are many others. In fact, here you hear people talk about the uh, seven mountains, the seven mountains. So look at it and look at those areas. You can provide service in all those areas. Key point to note, around service as we go back into the scripture to look at Joseph. Hidden talent is useless. So is hidden gift of the Holy Spirit. If you have the gift of the Holy Spirit and you're not healing the sick, you're not praying as we have just prayed, you're not preaching the gospel. So the Spirit will convict sinners and bring them. Hidden gift of the Holy Spirit is useless. Hidden talent is useless. Your hidden skill is useless. Of course, you know that from the Bible. Hard work is required to hone and put the gifts and talents to use. Service is required. You have to serve. Just reading the books alone is not enough. You have to get into the field and practice it. Glory be to God. You have to get into the field and practice it. I will come back here. So let's, let me stop sharing and let's read the scriptures on service. I'm hoping we will cover service and discipline today. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to our God. Thank you, Lord. So let's look at Genesis that we have been reading. Chapter 39, we have read verses 1 to 6, and we saw what happened there to Joseph, that he was sold to the um, officer of Pharaoh in Egypt, a man called Potiphar. So, from verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast long, longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. You want people to commit everything they have to your hand? then you have to demonstrate what our text says. Faithful. You have to be faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the one teaching there. So read that scripture again. So Joseph, remember we said last time, he suddenly became the CEO of the house of Potiphar serving, as you can see in verse 4. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, he put under his authority. Let's continue to read. I read that verse 8 again. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand. Nine, there is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me, but you, because you are his wife, 
How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work. To do what? Work. And none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to them. She called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in and he came in to me to lie with me. And I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that, I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. Glory be to God. So, I'm reading 16 now. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. 17. Then she spoke to him with words like this, saying, the, the Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph, everybody say Joseph. <laughs> then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. Who was with Joseph? The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with you. Have you come to Jesus Christ? Have you received the Holy Spirit? I tell you, be conscious of the Holy Spirit of God. Because he is the presence of God that is with us. God is with us. Jesus' name is Emmanuel. God with us. If God be for us. Who can be against us? 21 again. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Hear this, verse 22 and 23. Even in the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison, whatever they did there, it was his doing. Whatever they did there, it was whose doing? Joseph's doing. 23, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Hallelujah. Ah, I told you my story. Psalm 1 verse 3. That our verse for this year has been one of my principal scripture of faith. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in my season. My leaf shall never wither, and whatever I do prospers. I and another uh, uh, person took some money and put into a petrol to sell, uh, to diesel, rather to sell diesel. I think I've told you we had opportunity to sell diesel within two weeks you will make some money out of it. So borrowed money, gave to that person who was operating. Added mine and added that person, the one I took from my friend. It was my friend who gave me the money. He even connects here once in a while. And this person went, and he, as he went, as I would always commit everything I do to God's hand, got the diesel, 
and was going to supply. On the way, the tanker fell and got suspended. And the, the driver came down and was so frightened and panicked by what he saw because he could not understand it, that a tanker fell on the road, off the road, a high point. Instead of the tanker to tip over, the tanker was suspended. And he called the person that I was dealing with and said, I have seen the hand of God in what has happened. Don't bother, I am going to pay the transport. You know, he was paid to deliver this. Now this happened, he said, I am going to look for another vehicle and pay. And when he looked for another vehicle, he got people with pumps to come and pump from that truck into the truck that he got. The people came and saw the event and said, this can only be God, we will not charge you money. <laughs> oh, the hand of God, because Somebody dared to put his faith on this faithful and true God, like Joseph did. God is with you, brothers and sisters. Psalm 1 verse 3, whatever I do prospers. Declare it to yourself. Whatever you do prospers. You shall not suffer loss. In the mighty name of Jesus. That business is coming out and coming through. In the mighty name of Jesus, only learn to do what Joseph did. There is a key, there is a key, there is a key. Which is what we are studying, the four S's of Joseph. Number one is skills. Number two is service. And that is where we are now. So let's look at this service. What did Joseph do here? Um, so that's how they transferred, the, to conclude that story, transferred the product, and then what is successfully supplied, and that I got the money, returned the money that my friend gave to me, and I didn't have to owe him. That's the life of some people. That's why you must pray. Every oppression must stop in your life. Some people, if it was their situation, they will borrow that money. The money they borrow will be lost. Their own will be lost. So they lose money, they lose the profit, and they also become debtors to somebody. Ah, oppression will stop in your life. Oppression will stop in my life. Open your mouth again and pray. And say, every oppression in my life cease now, cease now. Go ahead and declare it for yourself. Declare it for yourself. The God is with me. The Lord God is with me. I reject oppression. Whoever oppresses me in this life, Whatever power oppresses me in this life, cease, cease to exist now. Cease to exist. Give up, give up now, give up now. Every power that oppresses me, give up now in the name of Jesus. I must flourish. I must prosper. That is the will of God concerning me. Joseph prospered even in Egypt, even in prison. I must prosper. So shall it be unto you and me and all the people of God say, bigger, amen, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I right away, I just feel like praying for the sick. I just feel like praying for the sick because I, 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 yesterday, somebody called me by phone and I said, let us pray. As we began to pray, I was letting, put your hand upon the place that was paying you I declare in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. She said something started moving and the pain left her. And I said, why not just uh, receive the Holy Spirit? Straight away, she began to speak in tongues on the phone. Distant doesn't separate us. The Spirit of God is available to us. Just believe God and use the skills, the provisions, the processes, what the word of God teaches. Okay, now very quickly we look at Joseph. Oh, you can see that in Joseph's life, number one, he was loved because of his behavior, his behavior, which we learned. He served. Where did he serve first? By feeding the flock of his father. He started feeding the flock of his father, so he didn't just start. 
And you could see by his behavior, he didn't condone bad behaviors. If you go back to 37, I'm now taking all these points together. Because he reported the bad behaviors of his brother, if you remember that. So he was always serving. So we see here again in Potiphar's house, he served so well that Potiphar handed over everything to him. What is the practice that the people of the world want you to do? They say you have to be smart. When they give you opportunity to serve, you cut corners. Somebody will set up a business and call you to become a partner. Even pastors, Christians, those who say they are Christians. Not to talk about others. You will be stealing. Oh, in the office, what do you do? But Joseph was faithful. The key is faithful. If you're not faithful in another man's business, who will entrust to you your own, your own? If you're not faithful in the worldly wealth, how would you get the true riches that God gives? So Joseph was faithful. Joseph served diligently. Joseph served excellently. No shabbiness. And the master, his master handed over everything to him. So if we just run through verses 2 to 4 again, there, then you will see, say the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Three, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Let me say something I often use to challenge people that God will do nothing if you don't do something. Hear me and hear me clearly. God will do nothing if you don't do something. Praise the name of the Lord. It is what you do that God will prosper. Psalm 1 verse 3, again, I emphasize. He said, and whatever I do, prospers, shall prosper. So, brothers and sisters, the keys of Joseph, learn skills. Develop skills and then serve. What does service mean? Application of skills, your gift, your talent, application of skills to meet needs and provide solutions to problems. So we see in Potiphar's house, Joseph served. <clears throat> Jump with me again to the prison, verses 22 and 23. What happened? Joseph was in prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Joseph now knew how to lead people and use people to produce extraordinary results because he learned to serve. Some people will carry shoulders and refuse to serve. They already see themselves as world leaders. Where did you hone your skill? What is your report? What is your testimonial? When David wanted to face Goliath, Saul looked at David and said, ah, you are not able. David reeled out his testimonials. When David reeled out his testimonial, they saw heard it and said, go, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. So will somebody hear your testimonial, backed up by the power of God, and nobody will deny you that position, that place, that favor that God Almighty has kept for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Only you must develop skills. You must apply those skills in serving. 
when you apply skill to serve people, the room is made for you. The door is open for you. Uh, sadly, as I told you that Jesus said that the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. Sadly, this is what the 419, as we call them in Nigeria, deceivers, this is what they do. If they come to your place, whether it is uh, organization, anything you do, especially social and uh, voluntary places, the first thing they will do is to volunteer. Before you know it, they will be everywhere serving, serving, serving. Before you know it, especially those who are not diligent in hearing from the Spirit of God, they will begin to say, ah, this is the, a child of God. Ah, this one, the gift. Uh, before you know it, they will hand over the place to him. Then he will wreak havoc. They do this a lot to business owners. Yes, it's not just service alone. There must be the next one. So let's go back. Discipline. So immediately, service will open doors. Skills and service applied together will open doors. Will make the master hand over the place to you. But you need discipline to sustain it, discipline. So that takes us to number three S, discipline. And we've seen here that Joseph was very disciplined. Discipline is the number three S, self-discipline. Potiphar's wife said to Joseph, lie with me. And Joseph said, no way. Some people will tell you it is smartness. Uh -uh. After all the suffering, now your God master, uh, your God uh, wife rather, your God wife, don't you know she will be giving you uh, good things? You are deceiving yourself. You're killing your destiny. You're killing your dream. You're killing your vision and your purpose in life. Because if Joseph did that, apart from the fact that he would only have been limited to Potiphar's house, it will not take long. It will be exposed. And imagine what would have happened to him. Even when he didn't do that, he was thrown into prison. But again, you can see here that this prison was God's own promotion. Hallelujah. That's the next point, God's promotion. So that trial you're going through is God's promotion. God is taking you to the next level. If you are disciplined, you have integrity. When doors are opening, when the service, when you serve, doors are opening, your master will hand over big money to you, will entrust you with opportunities. Would you say, ah, this opportunity, this is one time opportunity, oh, let me take this million. You take one million and run away. Meanwhile, that one million you've taken will peck you at that one million. You will never get past it. Whereas if you serve there and you learn, ah, okay, so I can handle one million, I can handle 10 million, you will grow and begin to handle hundreds of millions, grow and handle billions. May that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. May that be the portion of all the children of God, wherever you're listening, in the name of Jesus. So, discipline, self-discipline is very important. Hear what Paul said about this self-discipline. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 27, hear what Paul said. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, if you're there with me, verses 24 to 27, he said, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. There is a way to run this race to gain true riches. Five, 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. This is discipline. He's disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain 
a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not, uh, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Some people are beating the air, empty. Look at verse 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached the, to others, I myself should become disqualified. Lest after I have walked, when the time of resort comes, I will not get the result. So Joseph learned skills, service, and self-discipline. And this prepared him for that great uh, dream that the Almighty God had for him. I'll just share my screen one more time, and then we will have uh, the discussion to show us a bit on discipline. So, self-discipline. Self-discipline is the correction and regulation of oneself for improvement and self-control. It is self-mastery. Just like we read there in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, you see Paul compared it to athletes. Those who are Olympians will tell you the key thing in success is discipline. In fact, there was... Um, a survey that was done and a number of CEOs, very successful chief executive officers, business rich people, wealthy people were interviewed um, in, amongst the behaviors, habits that they stated that was key to their success was self-discipline. Self-discipline is the key, brothers and sisters. So skills and service will open door for you, but self-discipline is what will sustain you and will increase you. Hear me again, skills and service will open doors for you, but self-discipline is what will sustain you and increase you. Self-discipline in these areas, habits, you need time discipline, you need spiritual, and economic discipline. You know, some people, once money enter their hand, that is when they will blow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was just laughing at one of those, <laughs> you know, one of those people that I told you about, uh, I mean, I, I do, I, I try to coach. Uh, one of them, I helped, the person was, I uh, had a startup and then had them, maybe like the second business. The first money this person made from the business, he went to a place and declared drinks for all, drinks for everybody, because he thought he made a kill. <laughs> Economic discipline wasn't there. So time discipline is very important. If you're a child of God, spirit-filled, and you are still sleeping after 6 a.m., uh, you are not doing well because you are supposed to be praying. Early morning, you are supposed to be praying. That's why, as we said before, if you have the gifts of the Spirit and you do nothing with it, it is useless. So these four areas, and there are many other areas of discipline, even discipline in your speech, your communication, how you talk, some people, whatever is in their heart is the thing they say, and they say, that is how I am. Yes, please, that's how you are. You only need to learn what it means to discipline your tongue. So discipline of the tongue is very important. I think I will add that, add that to the list. So key point to note, doing what you don't like, but which you need is discipline. Doing what you don't like, but which you need is discipline. Like I just say, some people don't like waking up 6 a.m. Sometimes the spirit might even tell you to wake up 12 midnight, and people don't like because they want to sleep. 
Sometimes they may offer you food and the spirit say, don't eat. Don't eat this food. Discipline. You must learn to hold your stomach, hold your tummy. If you don't discipline yourself, you can't fast. If you don't discipline yourself, you cannot read the Bible. You cannot even develop the skills because some skills are not exciting. They are not the most interesting skill set to develop. As somebody said, that the showroom is a demonstration of the workshop. The showroom is a demonstration of the workshop. That thing that was done in the workshop and nobody saw is what will be displayed in the showroom. Meanwhile, nobody buys the workshop. It is the showroom people follow, people buy. So while it may not be exciting being in the showroom, know that it is very important. Discipline is the key that will sustain your, your skill and service, that door God has opened and increase you. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Um, we'll go back and then let us discuss. Okay, Brother Lucky, please go ahead. Once you open the line, speak. Yes. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You you talked about the four S of Joseph. Yes. You mentioned skill, service, self-discipline, and sacrifice. Yes. One thing I take away from this discussion is that you may have the skill, you may have, you may do service, and you may make so much sacrifice. But if you lack the third one, which is self-discipline. That means mm -hmm. the entire third skill will mm -hmm. amount to nothing. Hallelujah. Will amount to nothing. I agree. And I discovered that a lot of people today, their, their relationship and their career have been destroyed because of that tech factor, which mm -hmm. is lack of self-discipline. Thank you so God. much for this uh, teaching today, Pastor. God bless you, my brother. That's why you see some stars come up and then they fall as soon as they rise. Let me tell you something, just like I said, because, uh, maybe because of time. When you apply service, uh, you have developed skills and you apply service, whether it is volunteer, volunteering, open up, sir. I say doors will open. So some people have come on the scene and people say, wow, this is a star. Money flows, popularity, celebrity, all that before you know it. One, because they are not disciplined, they are not even able to maintain the pace that is required for them to keep the game up. So that's the first side of it. There will be so much demand on you Oh, you're a pastor, the gift of God is manifesting in your life. There will be demand on your gifts and you have to keep it up. That's why I told us that any child of God, anyone at all, and of course it's supposed not to be only pastor that the gift is uh, manifesting will find you. And that's why I keep teaching people that the miracle of God is available for every child of God. The Holy Spirit is one. Anyway, so your gift will manifest, the demand will come. So the, when the demand comes, you need to discipline yourself to continue to grow, to develop yourself, to match that demand, to even have the wisdom to manage that demand. Remember, Moses and Jethro, when Moses, the children, let the children of Israel out, <laughs> the demand became so much, if not that Jethro, the father-in-law, called him and said, ah, Moses, you will wear yourself out and wear these people out the way you are going. Remember, that's why I told you discipline of time. When we come, we'll talk about delegation. So he taught him one leadership quality called delegation. Leadership action, rather called delegation. So that was how Moses was able to manage. So demand will come. 
Then number two, opportunities, doors will open just like you said. And if you don't have integrity, discipline, you will miss it, lose it. Thank you, my brother. Please, next contribution. Next contribution, you can type it as well. Yes, Brother Sonny, please go ahead. Open the line and just speak. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Please go ahead, Brother. We, I've told you, Pastor, go ahead. Brother. Yes, morning can you to hear you. Me? I can hear you very well. Go ahead. Okay, the net the net the network is bad here. So let me just say if you can hear me from there. Uh, Clearly, we are what hearing you. Said, you. Go ahead. The three things you've mentioned this morning. Okay, you've mentioned the skill, service, and the self-discipline. Yes, uh, like the last speaker said also, uh, I think uh, what you said this morning is very, very important because if we have all the things that the the, the first two things and we lack self-discipline. Uh, that will take us to, you know, developing that sense of pride. And when we have pride, as like in the case of Joseph, uh, as you can see in the, the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 15, mm -hmm. when Pharaoh approached Joseph, he said unto him, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it, and I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. The answer of peace. Uh -huh. That simply means that uh, Joseph was not someone that has pride because if you're not mm -hmm. self-disciplined, pride will set in in your life Hallelujah. and then you start misbehaving. So Joseph was disciplined to recognize that God is the source of everything. That is Thank what you. I can pick from that, just, uh, Pastor. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, humility is required. Thank you. I will call Sister Gertrude because I know, Sister Gertrude, you are going to focus on a certain skill. So let's hear a bit of what you did in that space of the skill of people, people skills, people skills. Let's see what you you got from people's skills. Did you look at anything? Do you have any, some information to share? Please, let's hear. Or any other one you, you feel comfortable to talk about. Go ahead, man. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor. Um, the first question I have, or the question I have is on self-discipline. All right, oh, go ahead. Galatians 5.22 gives us uh, what we get from the fruit of the spirit. Yes. It, it says, um, let me see. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. What I want to ask is, is the self-discipline the same as self-control? Yes. Self-discipline. Okay. Uh, is self-control is an aspect of self-discipline. And in fact, in the point that I made, I actually put there that self-discipline is the correction or regulation of oneself for improvement and self-control. It also involves self-mastery. Yes, so self-control is indeed a part of self-discipline. Yes, it means the same thing, yes. Okay, self which is self control. Yeah. Okay, it's very important because we need the Holy Spirit to give us that. We can't do it on our own. And there is also another verse that says, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of love, sound mind, and is it self control or something like that, too? So God gives us that. So as children of God, we need to depend upon the Lord and the Holy Spirit who is in us to help us to be self-controlled. Thank okay. you very much, Pastor. Yeah, and for the, for the skill, yeah. I haven't done much yet about it. So uh, this week has been, last week has been very busy. So uh, I'm sorry for that, but I will still do some more. 
And oh, we'll yeah. also- Thank you. Th okay. Thank you, Ma. That, that's fine, that's fine, thank you. Let me just add a little clarification to the self-discipline and self-control as the fruit of the spirit. Um, so the self-control in the contexts that the Galatians chapter five, verse 22 was talking about here, uh, uh, verse uh, 23 rather, was talking about here is as regards what we're talking about in righteousness. Remember, this was contrasting the works of the flesh. So now I see where you were asking your question. Yes, self-control, self-discipline mean the same thing. However, as I said, that self-control is just an element. Um, so the fruit of the spirit, uh, and as I've told us before, that you practice. <laughs> Yeah, it is the fruit, it comes out. The Holy Spirit is already given to you, but how you develop it is by practicing. Yeah, it just does not uh, grow on its own. You have to allow the Spirit to manifest it. So it is the effort part that we're talking about here when we say self-discipline. It is the practice aspect that we're talking about. So self-control here, was contrasting the works of the flesh, which you could generally categorize them as sin. Yeah, uh, take for instance, say anger, and you come over here, that the spirit can give you the control over that anger, helps you to overcome it. Whatever is sin and negative in your life, the spirit of God already gives you the ability to control that. I hope that sets the same clear about self-control here, even though it means the same thing as self-discipline. However, the application in the Joseph's key that we are talking about here is the effort part with you yourself. I put to practice this self-control, develop and regulate myself like the athletes do that we have talked about. So that's the element. It means the same thing, but the emphasis is what we want to uh, make it clear. While the Spirit gives us the enablement, there is the practice side in various things. So a typical athlete might be whatever religion that he comes from, but he will he or she, let me use she this time, she will practice her routines. If she needs to wake up 4 a.m., and run two hours, she is gonna wake up 4 a.m. every day and run two hours. She's not gonna wait for the Holy Spirit. So that's the point that we're making here. And she's gonna go through those routines continually and shows up at Olympic and run the two hours as if nothing happened because she practiced how to run two hours at top speed and not get tired and did it till our body got used to it. So that's the connection of the two. So you are very right, uh, my sister, and thank you that you brought this up so we can connect the two. We can connect uh, Galatians 5, uh, 24, I mean 23, the fruit of the spirit self-control and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, that Paul again said and compared to the athlete. So that's the discipline we're talking about here. So much so Paul said in verse 27, he said, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Let me portray this with something. Look. As you grow and continue to grow, especially younger people, and you are a Christian, you have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will not make you not to, as a young man, maybe a fine, uh, find a young lady beautiful and attractive. But self-control is that ability for you to say no. And so the Spirit does help you in every area of self-control. 
So the way I will put it is that, which is where what I was trying to take us to at the end, and I keep emphasizing the Holy Spirit, is that as a Christian, you should know that if an ordinary person can discipline himself or herself to do anything, you have the spirit held on top of the effort. And Paul understood this very well. And that's why I also shared with us 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is good to add that. Paul's own, because people talk about grace, grace, grace. Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10, he said, I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So all come together. Yes, ma, the spirit of God helps us. We should actually have more self-discipline, but it requires effort. It requires the effort, the work, the consistency, the practice. And may the Spirit of God give us wisdom to do so in Jesus' name. So let us pray. If you're sick in your body anywhere, if you're oppressed by the devil anywhere, that sickness is going right now. Because Jesus said very clearly, in my name, I will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. I will cast out devils, and you will cast out devils. So you're going to lay your hand anywhere, any part of your body that is sick, wherever you are, and we are going to agree according to the word of God. Sickness must leave your body now in the name of Jesus. And the Bible also says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. I was healed. We were healed, and we are healed right now, and we remain healed forever in the name of Jesus. And so pray with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on my head, on my stomach, on my body, any part of your body that is sick, put your hand and say, I lay my hands as I do. I lay my hands on my head. In the name of Jesus, every sickness in my body, by the stripes of Jesus, I declare that I am healed. Get out of my body, for it is written, I shall lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus, and the sick shall be healed. So I lay my hands on myself, and I declare in the name of Jesus that I am healed. Therefore, I am healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I declare you whole in the name of Jesus. Remove your hand now and say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out every form of devil in my life, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in anything that concerns me. I cast out every form of the devil, every manifestation of the devil, every work of the devil. I cast it out. I terminate it because it is written. That in the name of Jesus, I shall cast out devil. So I cast you out, devil. I terminate every work of the devil because it is written. Jesus said to me, behold, I give you power. I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Jesus has given me the power and the authority. In the name of Jesus, I cast out and terminate every work of the devil in my life, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in my business, in my career, in my ministry, in my family, in my marriage, in anything that concerns me. I cast out the devil and I terminate every work of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. Declare and say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me according to the word of God all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord to glorify God, to praise and, uh, and worship him forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Amen. So let it be unto you. So let it be unto me. So let it be unto every one of us and our families in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we close.